Hey, what are you at guys? My name is Troy and welcome to Facility D20 where we're always making cool stuff. I'm back at it again with some Puppets of War miniatures. This time we're going to 3D print and then paint some jetpack strikers. Come on in, these guys are about to take off. If you guys haven't checked out Puppets of War, I'm going to drop the link down in the description. They make some awesome miniatures and STL files. This time we're going with the jetpack strikers. So I threw one of these things on the print bed and sliced it up. It was going to run about 4 hours and take about 72 cents. And the print came out really nice. Pop it off my bed and I like to use an angled trowel here. It helps chip them off a little easier. Make sure you clean the build plate up before you put it back in the printer. And they were nice and easy to come off the supports. Didn't leave any divots or damage at all. This is 70% alcohol here and I put them in there for about five minutes. And then under the UV light for another five minutes. What's really cool about these things is they come in multiple pieces and you can pretty much assemble them in any sort of pose that you want. Clean up was super easy on these things. And you can see that they also have uh, little magnet holes already built into them if you want to magnetize the parts, which is super cool. A Little bit of crazy glue and I stuck these together pretty easily. Now this guy was going in my diorama of course, so I just stuck him on a base for the meantime. If you guys are enjoying this video, make sure to smash that subscribe button and join the facility. I'd love to have you here. Now I really like this Rust Oleum 2x Matte Black. It's a really good black primer. Then I've done some pre-shading or zenithal highlighting like some people like to call it. Making sure I hit all the high spots where the light would naturally pop off the miniature. Then I done a little bit of experimenting and I took some black ink and I decided to pretty much wash the whole miniature down with this just to see what would happen. But I think it ended up too dark, so I hit it with another quick highlight of white. Now this Magic Blue paint by Vallejo is really good, but it's a really heavy pigmented paint. And a lot of that pre-shading that I done pretty much disappeared once I base coated it. Then I used some iconic blue from the Army Painter set and just hit all the highs. Just did a little bit of shading here. These miniatures are really good for this. They've got some really nice sculpts, so you can really get in there to these panel lines and these armor plates and uh, add some nice shading details. Decided to keep it pretty simple and just hit all the metallic parts with a gunmetal from Vallejo.
base coated the face with some light grey and the plan was to go in later and hit it with some contrast paint. A few other pieces were painted black. I do this by starting with a grey base coat and then washing it in Nolan oil. And washed all the metallic parts in Nolan oil as well. Then I use some bloody red and white mixed together 50-50 and just hit the face with some highs and kind of highlight it a bit. A little bit of edge highlighting on all the black areas. Just using the side of my brush there to do that and then I use some yellow and gave like two or three coats to make those warning stripes and then a quick highlight using the gunmetal silver again to make all those silver parts pop. Next up, I use some Vallejo metal color, got a little piece of sponge and my hobby tweezers. Soaked it with some paint, dried off the excess and started to do little paint chips everywhere. Guys, if you're liking this video, make sure to smash that like button. It really helps little channels out like me, and I appreciate it a lot. Overall, these Puppets Ward miniatures are really, really cool, and I highly recommend them if you haven't checked them out. I do have a Patreon if you want to support the channel, check it out. I do a lot of fun stuff over there like exclusive videos, behind the scenes posts and any STL files or anything like that I create, I throw on there as well. And stick around and check out some other videos on my channel like this diorama where this guy ended up going.